Welcome to the new video from Implied Concepts. In this video section, we will learn about RDD operations on the cloud storage file systems. We saw in our first Spark job, how we use containers and parallelize method to create the RDD. PySpark can create distributed datasets from any storage source supported by Hadoop. Here, we will look into S3, Azure Blob Storage and GCP Cloud Storage File Systems. Strictly speaking, S3 is not a file system but object store. An object store has a very different data storage architecture than that of HDFS. However, for cloud-based big data applications, benefits of S3 far outweighs traditional Hadoop-based HDFS file systems. The table shows comparison between S3 and HDFS. Same is true for using Azure and GCP storage systems. We saw in installation and setup videos how to add libraries to Spark directories to access the cloud storage, and also saw how to set up cloud storage, get access credentials and configure them in Spark environment. Let's now look at the Hansen demo of accessing these storage systems. To load the file from the local file system, here in our case a text file. We use text file method. It automatically reads the text file and converts it into RDD. Remember that just like read operation, Spark has different write operations as well. Save as text file is the most simple form of saving the file as text strings. We will look into other videos about different operations on RDD. Here our focus is primarily on how can we access different file systems under the Spark environment. Let's now look at how to read the file from Amazon S3. To access the S3 file system, you will need to add AWS Java SDK.jar and Hadoop AWS 2.7.6.jar files into your Spark jars folder. We have seen this process in our installation videos. Syntax of accessing S3 bucket is S3n colon double slash bucket name slash and then the file name. As shown in the figure, I am accessing the readme.md sitting in S3 bucket into the Spark environment, by using Spark Context's text file method. I then perform action on the loaded RDD with take 5 method. This will display first 5 lines of my text file. Start PySpark with Jupyter Notebook. I will first stop the existing Spark context and instantiate a new one. Let's read file from a local file system. Here, I read a sample text file, sparkcontextrddfilesystems.txt. Object type is returned as RDD. We will do some action on this RDD by reading few lines. Take 5 will print first 5 lines of the file. Now to access the S3 bucket, type the following command, sc.txt file and within parenthesis, s3n colon double slash, implied concepts 2, readme.md dot take 5 for reading 5 lines. Implied Concepts 2 is the bucket name I have in S3, and readme.md is the file I uploaded in that bucket. It reads 5 lines and displays. Remember to put the key ID and access key from rootkey.csv file downloaded from AWS into core site.xml file.
Let's now access file from Azure Blob Storage. The syntax is was bs colon double slash then container name at storage name dot blob dot core dot windows dot net. Remember to add s after was b for secure access. As shown, I am accessing Spark defaults .conf .xml file and displaying first five lines. This is just a random text file. You can choose any text file to your liking. Now open your Jupyter Notebook and let's add the command sc.textfile within parenthesis was bs colon double slash implied concepts 2 add implied concepts 2 dot blob dot core dot windows dot net slash spark defaults dot conf dot xml dot take 5 if you get HTTPS error, then you have missed putting S after was B. If you get path does not exist error, check the container name, storage name and your file name again. If you get resource not found error and if you are in Windows environment, then you need to downgrade your Spark Hadoop binaries to 2.3.3. Latest binaries have problems with this error fix. If you are following our recommended libraries during installation then no need to worry. Make sure you have added Azure Access Key to core site.xml file as I have shown here. Now let's look into accessing GCP file storage. Syntax is gs colon double slash bucket name slash file name as shown, we are accessing core site.xml file, and reading first five lines from it. You can use any text file instead. Go to your Jupyter Notebook and type the following command. sc.txt file within parenthesis gs colon double slash implied concepts two slash core site.xml dot take 5 remember to add the gcp access key json file path to your sparks default conf take note that we have not added this to core site.xml file like we did for aws and azure let's recap what we learned so far we talked about HDFS and cloud-based performance comparison. How cloud-based objects outperform traditional HDFS file systems. We looked into how to access Amazon S3 file system. We learned about Azure Blob Storage access. We looked into different errors one might encounter during the setup. We also looked into GCP cloud storage access. We have also seen what changes need to be made in coresite.xml file for Azure and S3 access. We learned how to configure sparkdefaults.con file for GCP access. Congratulations! We now have a strong foundation to progress in this course. In the next video lecture, we will learn about RDD operations. See you in the next video.